Hello, FLL coaches, and welcome to my secret laboratory of terrible advice. I'm Coach Silva, and today I'm serving you the first course of a two-part disaster buffet. We're diving into the 10 most catastrophically bad pieces of advice you can give your FLL team. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would I want bad advice? Well, Buckle up, Buttercup, because I'm going to show you exactly why each piece of advice is absolutely awful so you can do the complete opposite and become an FLL coaching legend. Oh, and stick around until the end because I've got a spicy prediction about which mistake will make you want to throw your robot out the window. Let's begin this beautiful journey of destruction, shall we? Section 1. Team Formation Fiascos We're kicking off with team formation because if you're going to crash and burn, why not start from the very beginning? Number 1. Only recruit the smartest students in school. Oh yes, darling, we only accept students with GPAs above 4.0 and the ability to solve calculus in their sleep. Because we all know that academic intelligence is the only superpower that matters in FLL, right? Who needs creativity? Who needs the kid who makes everyone laugh when the robot decides to have an existential crisis? Here's the plot twist that'll blow your mind. The best FLL teams are like the Avengers. You need Iron Man's tech skills, Captain America's leadership, Thor's, well, Thor's enthusiasm, and yes, even Hawkeye's precision. The shy, creative kid? That's your secret weapon. The class clown? They're your stress relief superhero. The kid who never gives up? That's your team's backbone when the robot fails for the 47th time. Number two, if you have more than 10 interested students, reject the rest immediately. Moo ha ha ha, you want to join FLL? Too bad, we're at capacity. Go find another hobby, like, I don't know, stamp collecting. Because obviously we want fewer kids interested in STEM, right? Let's crush their dreams right away and make sure they develop a lifelong fear of robots. Listen up, coaches. When 15 kids show up at your door, your brain should go, jackpot! Two teams? Junior mentors? Documentary crew? Social media managers? The possibilities are endless. Number three, assign fixed roles from day one and never, ever change them. System error if roles change. Because personal growth is so last century. Why would Mary discover she's a building genius? Why would Johnny realize he has a secret love for coding? Flexibility? What is this, yoga class? The best teams play musical chairs with roles. When Mary tries building, she discovers she's basically a Lego architect. When Johnny attempts programming, his brain lights up like a Christmas tree. Rotation isn't chaos. My friends, it's growth multiplied by six. Section two, innovation project disasters. Now we're entering the innovation project danger zone where we can really obliterate the educational experience. If you want to be ready for the first LEGO League competition, check out the book, Ready for Takeoff, the guide I wish I had when I started coaching FLL teams. Check the link in the description. Number four, choose the problem that sounds most impressive to judges. Let's solve world hunger using quantum nanotechnology and interdimensional portals. It sounds amazing. Never mind that little Timmy has no idea what quantum means and thinks nanotechnology involves really tiny screwdrivers. Here's a truth bomb. Judges can smell authentic passion from three rooms away. A team genuinely excited about helping stray dogs in their neighborhood will destroy a team robotically reciting fusion reactor data they found on Wikipedia. 
Number 5. Don't waste time talking to real experts. Google is your best friend. Why talk to actual archaeologists with dirt under their fingernails and incredible stories? Google has everything, including that one Wikipedia article written by someone's cousin. Let me paint you a picture. When a team interviews a real archaeologist who tells them about finding 2,000-year-old pottery or how drones are revolutionizing excavations, boom! Those kids transformed. Their eyes light up like they just discovered fire. That interview? It becomes the moment that changed their relationship with science forever. Number 6. Focus only on super technological and complex solutions. If your solution doesn't involve AI, blockchain, nanotechnology, and time travel, it's basically worthless, bro. A simple but effective solution? Ew, how practical. Want to hear about a team that made judges cry? They created a simple board game about energy saving. No code, no fancy tech, just pure creativity and heart. And they won the Champions Award and proved that innovation isn't measured in gigabytes, it's measured in impact. Section 3. Robot Design Catastrophes Time to enter the robot design territory where we can create mechanical disasters of epic proportions. If you want to be ready for the first LEGO League competition, check out the book Ready for Takeoff, the guide I wish I had when I started coaching FLL teams. Check the link in the description. Number 7. Build the most complex robot possible using every available piece. Use all 500 plus pieces. Make it look like the Eiffel Tower had a baby with a transformer. Stability? Boring. Functionality? Overrated. Picture this. I once saw a robot so complex it needed three kids to carry it and looked like it was designed by a committee of caffeinated engineers. I also saw a simple, elegant robot that completed missions with the precision of a Swiss watch. Guess which one made judges go, wow, and which one made them go, what is that? Number 8. Program directly at the tournament. Pressure creates diamonds. Why practice for months? The adrenaline of 200 screaming spectators and a ticking countdown is obviously the perfect environment for writing complex code. Programming live at the tournament is like trying to perform brain surgery on a roller coaster during an earthquake while blindfolded. Successful teams arrive with tested, refined, and backed up programs. Their students can explain every single line of code because they lived it, breathed it, and probably dreamed about it. Number 9. Have only one person program everything for consistency. Behold, the programming chosen one, while the other peasants watch from the sidelines like spectators at their own robot's performance. What could possibly go wrong with this plan? One flu outbreak equals total disaster. One family vacation equals coding catastrophe. One case of brain fog equals team elimination. But when everyone understands the robot's logic, each member becomes a superhero who can troubleshoot, contribute, and confidently explain to judges. Number 10. Never document the process. Only final results matter. Photos, videos, notes? Who has time for that nonsense? Judges definitely don't want to see the team's journey, mistakes, or growth. <laughs> Documentation is like the team's baby photo album. Every picture, every scribbled note tells the story of student transformation. And when presentation time comes, that visual evidence brings their story to life. Plus, kids love looking back at their journey. It's pure magic. And that, my fellow coaches, concludes part one of our disaster masterclass. But wait, we're just getting started. In part two, we're diving into the remaining 10 catastrophically bad pieces of advice, including 
the worst robot game strategy that'll make you want to hide under a table. Core values presentations that'll make judges cringe so hard they'll need chiropractor visits. Tournament day disasters that'll have you questioning your life choices. And the post-tournament mistake that ruins everything. Hit that like button if you're already cringing at your past coaching mistakes, subscribe for part two, and drop a comment telling me which of these first 10 disasters made you go, oh no, I've done that. Remember coaches, every terrible piece of advice avoided is one more chance for your students to become the curious, collaborative, resilient problem solvers this world desperately needs. See you in part two if you can handle the rest of this beautiful disaster.